Joining me now from Amsterdam is Jörg Wilders. He's a Dutch MP. He's apparently been receiving threats from uh, unknown people because he came out and supported Nupur Sharma. With us also is Tahe Siddiqui, a well-known Pakistani columnist. Uh, joining us uh, at this moment uh, is Jitain Jain. He's a cybersecurity expert and can talk about how a lot of the social media chatter that we are seeing, which seems to suggest that the Islamic world is outraged, is actually coming from IPs in Pakistan and Jitin will talk about that. Sushant Sareen is a leading uh, foreign affairs, strategic affairs expert, uh, senior fellow at ORF. Uh, Hamza Masood join us. Uh, he's a political activist and a student leader at the Aligarh Muslim University. I want to go across to Jot Wilders first. Can you tell us about the kind of threats that you've been receiving? You're in Amsterdam, so I'm curious why you decided to wade into this controversy and come out and speak out in favor of Nupur Sharma? Well, I believe uh, Nupur Sharma um, really um, only uh, spoke uh, the truth, the truth about uh, Mohammed. And um, I believe it's really unacceptable if only for speaking the truth, um, she receives uh, death threats that India is being threatened by um, many um, Islamic and Arab nations to apologize or um, even have embargoes against their products. This is really ridiculous, especially um, if you take into account that those countries that are demanding actions from India are the biggest the hypocrites themselves, you know. If you see how most of the um, um, Arab and Islamic nations, how they treat their own minorities, they have the worst track record um, of the world when it comes to uh, human uh, rights, you know, if you're, whether you're a woman or a journalist uh, or a, a Jew or a Christian or a Hindu or a non-believer, uh, you have the worst track and worst time if you uh, uh, are in one of the Arab nations. So I think we should defend her for being heroic and uh, speaking the truth and not give in to the Islamic um, intolerance. We should criticize them for their track record when it comes to human rights and not uh, criticize our own. Can you give our viewers a sense of the kind of threats that you've been receiving? Where specifically have they been uh, seeming to come from and uh, what, what kind of threats have you received? Well, in the last few days, uh, death threats from uh, many uh, countries, Pakistan, and India, uh, other uh, Islamic nations for uh, speaking up and defending uh, Lupo Sharma. Uh, but then again, um, you know, um, I lost my personal freedom uh, 17 years ago mm -hmm. when I made a documentary about uh, Quran, the Quran, the Quranic verses. I got at that time, 17 years ago, fatwas from the Al-Qaeda, from the um, Pakistani Taliban, and from other organizations. So I left, I left my house 17 years ago with my wife and I, well, you know, I never returned. I lived in, in safe houses uh, from the government, um, um, in army barracks, in prison cells, just to say, say, stay safe. So I know what I'm talking about. And I know what Nupo Sharma um, um, most probably uh, could face. Her life will never uh, uh, be the same. Um, and um, we should, a rally around uh, such person. We should defend them, not apologize for them, but defend them and stand uh, behind her. And that's what I, I don't know her. I'm from far away, uh, Kingdom of the Netherlands. I'm the opposition leader in the Dutch parliament. But I defend her because she did nothing wrong. Uh, you're in politics yourself. Uh, we've seen a big backlash on these comments made by Nupur Sharma and a guy called Naveen Jindal across the Islamic world against the Indian government. What are you making about the kind of backlash that India seems to be receiving globally? Well, I would say, um, um, look at yourself. Look in the mirror before you um, um, decide uh, 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 what you think about India or any other country. You know, the Organization of Islamic Conference, the OIC, uh, they have some declaration about human rights. It's called the uh, Cairo Declaration. And all those nations that are also attacking India today they put Sharia law above democracy and human rights. And uh, as I said, um, if you are a minority um, in those countries, you are persecuted and you are uh, taken uh, to jail. You uh, lose uh, your freedom. They are the most intolerant countries with the most worst track record when it comes to human rights. So um, we should not uh, let us lecture us uh, uh, by them. Um, uh, India is a sovereign nation. 
um, the only one in India who can decide whether people were um, wrong or not to speak are the Indian courts. The Indian courts um, are responsible for that, not a mob or, or any other uh, nation um, 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 uh, the, who are criticizing India. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your values. We are, you are, the Holland, uh, the Netherlands, uh, India, you are true democracies. Uh, don't let your self be lectured by intolerant um, Islamic nations who are the worst when it comes to human rights themselves. Gert Wilders for joining us from Amsterdam this evening. Thank you very much. Much appreciate your comments uh, and your thoughts. I want to go across to Sushant Sarin on the threat by the Al-Qaeda uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Is this something, uh, Sushant, that you take seriously or do you think it's just a rant given the fact that in the case of Charlie Hebdo and others we've seen actual terror attacks on the back of similar comments? So, uh, Rahul, uh, I think uh, any threat which comes from a terrorist organization has to be taken with a, a fair degree of seriousness. But having said that, <coughs> I think as far as the AQIS is concerned, uh, it's basically trying to cash in on a, uh, on a very emotional issue. Now, a, a, a lot of the emotion which has been, you know, agitated over this issue is uh, manufactured, as I'm sure... Uh, Jitin will tell you uh, later on. Uh, but some of it is genuine. Uh, now, whether it is out of ignorance, whether it is out of passion, uh, whether it is out of lack of knowledge is, is besides the point. Uh, so, uh, so they are trying to cash in on it and they're trying to revive themselves. They're trying to gain traction, which is very much there in the letter which they have released. You know, they quote, uh, they make, give a quote from Ibn uh, Tamayya, uh, who is the patron saint of all these takfiri terrorist jihadist organizations where he says that you know even when we had almost lost simply somebody insulting the prophet uh, revived all of us and then we went and occupied the castle or stormed the castle or whatever uh, so so clearly in terms of their actual presence on the ground it is probably not even in double digits uh, and I'm talking about government figures and security forces and intelligence agencies. So a lot of it is a rant. Uh, but still, I think we need to take it seriously because uh, they don't necessarily need to have a presence on ground to be able to carry out some kind of an attack uh, in the four places they have mentioned. And those places which they have mentioned have been deliberately selected. Delhi, Bombay, UP uh, and, and Gujarat. Uh, now, these are places which are lightning rods for many of these jihadist groups. So, yes, we have to take it with some degree of seriousness. But having said that, uh, I think uh, there are two more questions involved. One is a theological question, which I'm not surprised that they being takfiris uh, uh, have ignored that question. And I'll just give you two instances. One, uh, uh, it is from the example of Prophet Muhammad's own life. Uh, which is very often quoted, that uh, he used to be insulted by this woman every time he would walk past her house. Uh, and he never said anything to her. And one day when she was indisposed, uh, what the Prophet did was he tried to find out about her well-being. Now, clearly, if the Prophet was to be incensed by somebody questioning him, his authority, or insulting him, then he would have, you know, yeah. asked her to be beheaded. He never did anything like that. Okay, now I wonder uh, why uh, the other Muslims do not follow the Prophet's example. And the second is, uh, which I believe is in the Quran, uh, which, which uh, uh, advises uh, uh, its adherents that don't insult the religion of other people because otherwise they will insult your religion. And clearly if you watch that clip, uh, uh, you know, that, that controversial clip, uh, there was a lot of insult being heaped by the other panelists on Hinduism and I think Nupur Sharma lost her cool and said certain things which uh, actually are uh, b b part of the Hadith from what I've heard. Now, uh, Okay, so I want to go to Taha Siddiqui. Taha, you write a lot on terrorism as well. You're looking at these threats coming from the Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent. How uh, seriously would someone like you take these threats? What do you think is going on? Well, I think uh, most of the time when, when such, uh, uh, such an uh, atmosphere is built, 
uh, these terror groups try to take sympathy from the public and they they try to uh, jump on the bandwagon. And now we're seeing that, you know, from the from the Arab world, from Pakistan, all this sort of, uh, you know, uh, and, and this organized sort of social media campaigns. And <clears throat> following that, I, I think this is how uh, we've seen also, in, you know, when, when uh, Charlie Hebdo cartoons were made uh, in France at that time, uh, also, uh, ISIS uh, got onto the bandwagon. They started threatening. Charlie Abdo attackers were linked to ISIS uh, from from what we we found out from the investigations. So definitely, I mean, uh, these uh, you know uh, terror groups who have an Islamist background have in the past carried out attacks in Pakistan, for example. Also, we've seen that uh, you know um, uh, to to the extent that ordinary Police guards, like in 2011 in in in, in Islam in Islamabad, uh, the governor of Punjab was assassinated by his own police guard over blasphemy accusations. So definitely, I mean, there is that threat and there is that element that uh, you know Islamists do have taken uh, you know uh, extreme measures, have done attacks like that. So in in that sense, I mean, this this threat should be taken seriously. Uh, but at the same time, we should also look at at, at the fact that how. Uh, you know, this is this is uh, organized in a way where uh, it it was not, you know it, it's 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 actually by text that already exists, and uh, you know as earlier someone was saying that uh, you know in Prophet's life there is there you know there's this peaceful version also of him, but at the same time there are texts that talk about how uh, blasphemy people who are committing blasphemy were punished or were killed. So uh, there there's those both types of texts, and that's why. Uh, there needs to be uh, an open debate from the Muslim countries, uh, from the Muslim leaders about this, because that's not what's happening. So that's why then terror groups and Islamist groups, they take over and they hijack the whole narrative as we're Do seeing. you see merit in the argument that what she said was unfortunate, inadvertent, and she's regretted it, but she's essentially quoting from uh, the hadiths, and therefore, if she's saying what she is, she may be have, the construction may have been awful, but essentially, just on facts, uh, it, it's something which she's saying uh, which isn't incorrect, factually, at least is written in the text. And that's that, something uh, that actually, needs to be debated and looked at. That. Definitely. I mean, actually, there are de uh, several Islamic scholars who've spoken about this also in the same way. I mean, per, uh, also about the same facts, perhaps not in the same way. So that th there's, the, the, there's the way she did, but then there was this whole TV debate and how TV works. And there was a back and forth from the other other audio, uh, other guests. So, so because of that, it got heated. But uh, at the end of the day, she was stating what is already written in the scriptures and in, in, the, in the hadith. Uh, and, and these things need to be debated and discussed by the Muslim leaders, the Muslim leaders around the world, I do not understand why uh, they want to externalize the problem because uh, perhaps they want to externalize the problem because in that way they can radicalize their population for an external uh, external enemy. And, and that's what, you know, countries like Pakistan do or other uh, Muslim countries which are which are which are run as dictatorship do because they don't want to be questioned themselves. So they externalize problems like that and and target other countries. And, and that's what we're seeing with this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, Okay, Jitin Jain, you're looking at the trends on social media. Initially, it seems there's a lot of chatter on this issue. Then the open source investigation that I looked at, done by Kamaljit Sandhu and our OSIN team, seems to suggest that a lot of this chatter uh, seems to be organized out of Pakistan. What are you, what are you picking up? Rahul, uh, you know, I would like to uh, recall the op-ed I wrote for India today about the disinformation campaigns being run by ISPR against India in the last four years. And if you look today, you know, kind of campaigns which have been run by ISPR uh, post-370, uh, uh, you know, article abrogation after the Balakot air strikes, you know, during the CEA protest, Delhi riots, and then during farmer protest, you know, I mean, India has been literally sleepwalking into a narrative disaster. We have been a bruised victim of a you know, targeted information warfare and disinformation campaign by ISPR and ISI from Pakistan. You know, Article 370 and the reaction of Muslim world was a shock for them. They could not digest the fact that India's ties were with Islamic countries in the Middle East were evolving, increasing, and they were not willing to stand up for Pakistan after 370. And since then, you would notice there is a concentrated campaign emanating from Pakistan you know, projecting Islamophobia in India, these hashtags like, you know, Indian Muslims in danger are continuously running from last four years. During all these events of, you know, Tablighi Jamaat, CAA, lockdowns, 
Delhi riots, during hijab protests, there is a pattern to paint and dent India's global secular image. There is a concentrated campaign to destroy India's secular credentials and evolving image in the Middle East, especially in the Muslim countries. You know, you take the example of uh, uh, Mohammed Shami, that you know way he was trolled on Twitter after lose India lost to Pakistan. 80% tweets initially came from Pakistan. It was our people who walked into that narrative disaster. You take example of this Nupur Sharma episode. Uh, you know, in the first 24 hours, I analyzed 70% tweets have come from Pakistan, 20% from UAE and America using the How, how do you know that 70% are from Pakistan? You know, Jitain? Qatar, Indonesia and this Middle East. No, we have analyzed, I have the quote to you, anybody in OSINT can analyze the hashtag boycott India and you can see what is there. Now the point is not even 4% tweets came from Middle Eastern countries. This is all Pakistan pushing edited videos, images, propaganda and Middle East making fake handles. This happened during Delhi protest also. They created fake handles of Saudi princes. They created fake handles of, you know, uh, uh, many Muslim leaders in Iran. It has happened for the last four or five years and our agencies, I mean, we are, we are facing this not because of the, you know, uh, the great competence of uh, our adversary. It is because of the inertia of our own babus who are not just willing to accept and respond to this, uh, you know, uh, brazen information warfare against India. And no matter how many corrective steps we take after the incidents are done, the damage by this, these narratives, disasters, denting of India image damage is already done. And the biggest casualties is India's foreign policy in Middle East. Rahul, you take example of, I think we discussed on your channel, you know, uh, several th thousands of handles which are created from Pakistan during Delhi riots. They posted fake news like how Muslim women were evicted, how Delhi police was killing Muslim children by signing gas. All fake tweets and handles were created, disinformation was posted and then propagated by leaders like Rahman Malik from verified handles and then those handles were deleted. Now the point is India has to stand up, India has to accept that we have been targeted and India has to expose these campaigns of ISP mm -hmm. in Pakistan. Otherwise, you you know, let two, three years more come and you will find these religious frictions in Indian society, more rights, more hate campaigns, more speech. You know, <coughs> but, I mean, no doubt there is there is no smoke without fire. We have made our mistakes. Nupur Sharma may have made some erroneous statements, but Pakistan has now, you know, capitalized the art of creating mountain out of a mole. You, you do the slightest hate speech or make a loose comment by any, you know, fringe element. Pakistan will propagate that comment into the Muslim world as a mainstream Indian policy. Now, this is the problem we are facing and that is why this, you know, 15 Muslim countries, you know, you don't, they don't even allow other religions to practice their own faith in their countries. These are standing up as some secular, you know, great, uh, the, the protectors of free speech in the world and lecturing India. This is all, this is not Middle East or Muslim one, this is ISPR and their campaigns in Pakistan and Muslim countries are falling prey to that ISPR campaign and India's establishment has to realize Take, do the damage control and take corrective steps. And the only solution for this problem is to give a Pakistan taste of its own medicine. How do you propose that be done? I mean, expose them every day. You, they hit you by one stone, you expose them. I mean, they are lecturing us on voting rights of Muslims, how Muslims are caught in Indian democracy, how many Muslim candidates are in a particular party. In Pakistan, how many Hindu MPs do you have? A, a, a non-Muslim can not even become the Prime Minister of Pakistan. These are the people who marry children and then they are creating all this ruckus in our society. I mean, who are they to lecture us? Uh, the oldest continuing civilization in the world on religious freedom. In India is a land of multi-religious, multicultural society. We have enough inner tolerance and you know the, the on the off the record comments in a live TV debate as they, uh, they have been projected as a mainstream India's government policy. And this is not one incident, Rahul. You take the example of hijab controversy. You analyze how many tweets came from Pakistan. I mean, and forget, after 370, you know, the tweets like, you know, uh, 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 Kashmiri policemen have called, uh, killed 500 soldiers. Indian army has killed 5,000 Kashmiris. All this fake news has been emanating from Pakistan. You take the example of former protests. Most of the fake handles which government wanted to block were run by ISPR. You, I mean, anybody could social engineer and send them a fake link and track their IPs. Hamza Masood, you're listening to Jitin Jain and Sushant Sarin and Taha Siddiqui. I'm listening to everyone, sir. I'm listening to everyone. A lot of this seems to be orchestrated coming from Pakistan. And a lot of the commentary about India seems to be coming from countries with highly dubious records on human rights themselves. I mean, yes, certainly India has certain problems, there's no question about it. But if you look at Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Iran lecturing India on human rights, it almost seems absurd. Sir, I mean, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you one thing that uh, 
I think you couldn't get an MP from the ruling party to speak on this statement, so you got an MP from Dutch, Dutch Parliament. I mean, this is outrageous how they have whitewashed everything, how nothing is wrong and everyone can talk about profit. I am sorry, sir, but my right to life, to live my life with dignity in this country is under a threat. There is a continuous attack on our community. There is a continuous attack on our religious practices. There has been a systematic attack. Like, for example, sir, no courts have been doing anything. I am asking for justice. Nothing would have happened if Nupu Sharma was sacked. In a statement given to Open India, right-wing uh, news channel, uh, Nupu Sharma clearly stated that the Home Minister, Devendra Fadnavis, and various other leaders were rallying behind her. I mean, this is a propaganda. This is not a propaganda. This is the reality that is going on. Can you deny the statements given by the leaders of Bharatiya Janata Party where they say Ki aap ek Hindu bali ka laoge, hum bas Muslim bali ka laenge? An MP from Delhi saying to rape Muslim women. Different MPs from different locations but from the same party are continuously attacking uh, Muslims and the practices that, that they are doing. And it is very convenient for everyone to bring ISS, to bring Pakistan, to bring everything. I don't know, sir. I'm a normal Muslim. I'm living in India. And what I'm facing, I'm telling you on national television today, sir. This okay, is let happening, sir. Both Sushant and uh, Jitin respond to that. Jitin, I'll start with you because you're blaming Pakistan. We are questioning the human rights records of countries like Turkey and Saudi one, Arabia and Iran. One more thing, sir. Uh, Hamza makes an one more thing, uh, important Biden. point. He says that as a Muslim is feeling suffocated, that uh, you've got a majoritarian sentiment that is prevailing. Therefore, don't blame bots or IPs in Pakistan. Also, have the courage to hold the mirror and look within. Jitain. You know, Hamja, I'm sorry if you felt insecure in this country. I mean, this is the only country where the Muslims are the second largest majority in the world and you enjoy equal rights. Yes, it is, sir. It is, it is, it is a country for, for which my forefathers have sacrificed their lives. It is a country that Baba Sahib gave, gave us a constitution. Sir, Article 25 of the constitution gives us, gives us the right. We are that one country religion. in civilization. But, but what is happening Hamja. today? They, they are completely, the they are completely the the countries you are naming the constitution of India. Has equal right in that country. So let's, let's yes, celebrate. Let's be proud of our we, nation. There may be certain mistakes. There may be certain incidents. There may be certain people. There may be certain feelings of hurt. I mean, we have enough room within our own country to sort out our own problems. Now, now, if you want to blame that Indian courts are not functioning, Indian government is not functioning, Indian society is not functioning, Indian law is not functioning, then you are living in a fool's paradise. Which country do you want to blame? Speaking at the same time, Hamza, bye. Hamza, one second. I don't want both. No, one second. This is not. No, no, one second. This is not. Oh, one second. No, no, Hamza, Hamza, pipe down. One second. I want you to. No, one second, Jitain. I don't want both people speaking at the same time. Tempers in any case are running high. We've got a security threat from the ISIS. We want to just keep things calm and sensible. Uh, it, is, it is calm, sir. It is calm, sir. I am a, I am a citizen of India. And all I am saying is whatever is happening, why isn't uh, houses of Nupur Sharma and Jitendar uh, not being raised down by bulldozers? Because I have seen in the last one year that bulldozer is the new court in this country, sir. Why are ye, kyun unke gharo par bulldozer chal rahi hai, sir? No, but that's an ethical question. Sushant wants to come in. What if they done? Why should they have a bulldozer uh, on the house? Not, I mean, no, one second. Why is not justice being given, sir? Uh, okay, let Sushant respond to it. One second. Bro, I've heard what you're saying, Sushant. No, one second. Let Sushant. Let Sushant speak, please. Sushant. Why, if only if this guy keeps quiet because I've heard enough of his rants. You know, yeah, I think he should stop right, number one sir, being right. the victim. He's not a victim. For a, day, uh, for a day in this country, you know what again, I'm saying. Uh, Hamza, uh, let him speak. We heard you. Hamza, with respect, we heard you out. You said what you had to. Let uh, Sushant speak. I promise to come back to you. So, Rahul, number one, uh, you know, this constant victim card playing, when in many cases, these are people who also indulge in. It, did Nupur Sharma go and attack somebody? Did she go and uh, indulge in stone belting? Did she go and do any kind of rioting? She made a statement. Now, either Hamza, since he's such a great Islamic scholar, say that what uh, Nupur Sharma said uh, is not there in religious texts, that she has manufactured something and it is utterly wrong. Or he should say that those hadiths which, from which uh, other religious scholars like uh, Zakir Naik and others have quoted are completely fallacious and false and they need to be done away with. He will not take a position on that. But he has made it in his mind 
that Nupur Sharma said something blasphemous. But aside of that, this constant playing the victim card when in many cases there are people from the Muslim community who are as much responsible for violence as anybody else. I agree. If you are using the bulldozer as a statement, then the bulldozer yes. must be a secular bulldozer. You, if there is a Hindu or a Sikh or any other community which indulges in riot, if this is the new template, by all means, I am entirely for it. I don't want anybody to take law in his own hands. Even those people, now Al-Qaeda might have given a threat. What about the people inside India who are giving these threats? That we will carry out violence, that we will incite people to violence, that we will chop somebody's head off, and the government sitting silent on that? If any sir, action... Shamza, that's taken, very dangerous. One second, one second. Uh, Rahul, sir, one can I one say one, one thing, thing, sir? Just, just one sir, second. Can I say one, one thing? One, more, one, one second, I'm coming back to you. To Let's start complete. Yes. Rahul, Rahul, I want to say one thing. You know, you said something just right now, that everybody needs to look within. And I completely agree with you. I think, yes, the Hindu community must look within and see where we are going wrong as much as the Muslim community should look within. How much of looking mm. within have they done? So, you know, if you want to live in a composite culture, in a pluralistic society, it cannot be the responsibility of only one community to make peace. It has to be a, it has to be a collective responsibility. It's a, if you're talking about a composite culture, then everybody has to put in their part so that there is harmony, social harmony in this country. But if you Look, keep ranting, making, you know, death threats, going on rampage, I don't see how that is acceptable. And as far as the bulldozer is concerned, I believe the bulldozer should be a secular instrument. Sir, can I say something now? Yes, Hamza, go on. Yeah, sir. So this is the problem, sir, that I was talking about. I talked about leaders, I talked about a party, and I talked about an ideology. I never talked about a community, but the man... I'm sorry, the video isn't available on my phone, so I couldn't see who the man is. But he simply generalized the idea of Muslim community and started demonizing us. Sorry, sir, but whatever has been happening in last eight years, everyone, everyone is seeing this. The world is seeing this. Can you please recall what is happening? No, Sushant, let him speak. Sushant, let him speak. For a democracy, for a democracy like India, it is a matter of utter shame that we have to apologize, that we have to call leaders from the ruling party as fringe elements. Because India was leading this world, India was a prime example of a secular democracy, but people like you who blindly support hatred, who blindly support an ideology and who has this mindset in mind that Musliman hai to karai hoga. So sir, this mindset to badal na padega. No, but Sushant is actually speaking. calling for Hindus to introspect as well. Are you yeah, listening yeah. to what he's they saying? They should, they should, they should, they should. It is high time that we should be radicalized as society, be it Hindus, be it Muslims. But, but sir. Despite all that, despite all that, हम लोग रसूल अल्लाह के ऊपर कोई भी बदतमीजियों को जहालत वाली बातों को बर्दाश्त नहीं करेंगे। I'm speaking in Hindi ताकि ये message पूरा North India के अंदर खास तौर से because it is it is the place where the hatred is being harbored right now. He is not aware of the ground reality, sir. I work on ground. I know what's going on. I know how political parties and political leaders are functioning on ground. This whole matter is Solely political. There is a race going on between the uh, ruling party, leaders of the ruling party that pawns are the nafrat ko lega, kisko zada ucha pad milega. Sir, ye to rukna padega, sir. Jitin Jain, would you accept that ek... through WhatsApp, through social media, uh, over the past several years, uh, an environment so, has been built which election, means sir. that several of our states, whether it's a Madhya Pradesh, it's a Rajasthan, uh, or potentially in Uttar Pradesh, they're now a tinderbox where well, what we saw in Kanpur can actually, you know, happen elsewhere and can become much bigger. That because of a lot the songs, of this polarization so there, there on is, social is, media, a, we're now in a space where everybody, which is what I think the RSS chief Bhagwaji was trying to do, uh, we saw the BJP do it with these suspensions, that they just need to pull back because is, they're too so much so in an edge. Are, Jitin are, Jain, would you accept are, that in social media, which you track so carefully, has had a big role to play in that? No, one second, Hamza. Now you've spoken. Allow the other person to speak. Go ahead, Jitin. Now, now, Hamza. I mean, we can at least be tolerant to listen to others. Now, every time you keep interjecting, so I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. Go on, go on, Jitin. Be respectful enough to allow others to talk. आप चुप तो रहो यार. Go on, Jitin. 
हाँ राहुल यू सी दिस इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ आई एस पी आर टू क्रिएट एन एटमोस्फियर ऑफ रिलीजियस एंड टॉलरेंस इन इंडिया टू क्रिएट अ फिल्म ऑफ विक्टिम अमंग इंडियन मुस्लिम नाउ ही इज नॉट टॉकिंग एज ए इंडियन सिटीजन इज टॉकिंग अब एज ए इंडियन मुस्लिम दिस इज द होल प्रॉब्लम दैट वी दे दिस इज वॉट आई एस पी आर वॉन्ट दैट दे शुड बी सो मच ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड डिस्टर्स इन सोसाइटी दैट वी शुड हैव कंटिन्यूस रॉइट्स कंटिन्यूस हेट स्पीच एंड वी शुड फॉर गेट द डेवलपमेंट एजेंडा नाउ यू नो हम जो आई अंडरस्टैंड यूर फीलिंग दैट यू आर फीलिंग विक्टिमाइज यूर थिंक दैट यू नो कोई मस्जिद तोड़ देगा कोई कुछ कर देगा बट यू ऑल्सो हैव टू रियलाइज दैट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो दिस इज द सेम फीलिंग अबाउंग हिंदूज वन थाउजेंड एंड थाउजेंड ऑफ टेम्पल्स आर डिस्ट्रॉइड रिचुअली बाय द सॉवरिन ऑफ दैट डे बट नो वेयर इन दंट्री नो हिंदू सोसाइटी होल्डिंग मुस्लिम रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इट दोस्त बार आप चुप तो हो जाओ यार मैं क्यों चुप भाई मुझे बवासीर है क्या सुनना सुनूंगा ना आप बेवकूफी की बातें बोलते रहेंगे बदला लेंगे आप क्या दो सौ साल पहले की बात ला रहे हैं बदला लेंगे भाई आपकी भी तो सुन ही रहे हैं ना सर नहीं आप बदला लेंगे क्या सर अरे सर मैं यही तो बोल रहा हूँ आप जिम्मेदार नहीं आप सुने तो सही मैं यही कह रहा हूँ वी आर नॉट होल्डिंग यू रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड फॉर द सेम थिंग डोंट होल्ड इंडिया रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर वॉट पाकिस्तान इज डूइंग हमने हमने हिंदुस्तान चुना मेरे बुजुर्गों ने अरे कौन बोल रहा है यार आप बोल रहे हैं सर आप बोल रहे हैं सर किसने किसको चुन लिया वो इतिहास रहने दीजिए मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि आपने हिंदुस्तान को चुना हमने आप अरे कौन बदला लेने की बात कर रहा है आई एम सही डोंट वॉन्ट टू होल्ड यू रिस्पॉन्सिबल समझ में नहीं आता क्या ये अनपढ़ हो बताइए आप बदला लेंगे किसने कहा अरे काम का भी इस्तेमाल करो काम का भी इस्तेमाल करो भगवान ने दो काम भी है खाली जवान से बोलने से नहीं होगा He never said anything. I, I think you're making some of this stuff up. Rahul, kindly. Jitain didn't say anything about revenge. Sushant didn't say anything about only Muslims need to introspect. I heard him clearly say that Hindus need to hold the mirror to themselves. So at least yeah, listen to what they're saying. No one's trying to aggravate the problem. The issue of 200 years ago. No, but no one's trying to aggravate the problem. We're trying to find a solution that everybody. Rahul, I am saying we are not holding Muslims responsible. Responsible for what? Rahul, I am not saying anybody in India today, any political party, religious sect, organisation like RSS, want to hold India's Muslim today responsible for okay. what happened to hundred years ago. They are our brothers. Let, let, let me just say this: equal rights, equal respect, and equal thing. This is what I am trying to convey. Okay, as I come to the conclusion but, of this debate, let me just say this: that what we have seen happen elsewhere after the Charlie Hebdo cartoons came out seems to suggest very clearly. that this threat cannot be disregarded it cannot be taken lightly it needs to be taken seriously and i completely agree with sushant when he says oh, both communities need to introspect they need to look at the mirror see what's going wrong and everybody needs to calm down maybe it's a little late already uh, it should have been done earlier but that being said given the fact that the sarsang chalak of the rss said what he did the bjp has done what he, what it has everybody just needs to pull back so that we we push we pull back from the brink you don't want a country and its people to be on the brink uh, where there's a tinder box which could go off at any time that's the worst kind of position to be in so i hope that sanity prevails that is most important uh, on that note i want to thank our guests for joining us in the news track